Good morning. Do we need to think again about how we deploy MRI in population screening? Is it time for a reset? Here are my disclosures. Now we know that the traditional way of doing screening in prostate cancer results in a few men getting a lot of benefit, but a lot of men getting small amounts of harm, which is why it's not routinely recommended in many places to do prostate MRI screening. An MRI has been introduced to reduce the amount of harm in prostate cancer screening, but we can employ MRI in a multiple different ways as shown here. If we were to use the modern approach of deploying MRI after a raised PSA, and then do targeted biopsies on the basis of what we see, what would happen in a screening population? This was shown by this study. In this study, 10, 12% of men who were invited for screening underwent an MRI scan. And compared to a traditional approach, you can see that the number of men undergoing a biopsy procedure following the MRI was reduced, which is what we were expecting. The number of benign or unproductive biopsies goes down, as does the proportion of clinically insignificant disease. And you can see there's a slight improvement in the detection of clinically significant disease. So MRI seems to work. Now MRI has been suggested to be employed in the praise you algorithm. And MRI is used in a layered screening approach. So this layered screening approach is age-adjusted PSA followed by a clinical assessment. And this tends to reduce the number of men coming to an MRI scan. The MRI is then introduced to reduce the number of biopsies. And then there's an optimized biopsy strategy to reduce the number of inland cancers and the number of unproductive biopsies. And of course, there is a built-in safety net in there. Now, when I look at this, I see problems. I see problems all over the place for MRI and for therefore for radiologists. And this is what I mean by thinking about a reset. Clearly, we need to optimize MRI for this pathway and we need to integrate it more effectively into this pathway. So the first thing we need to decide is what protocol do we use? And does that depend on the pre-selection criteria? So in other words, do we employ this traditional method of a multi-parametric MRI? Well, if you look at the screening studies that were done after PSA selection, pre-selection, you'll see that roughly 50-50 split with or without contrast medium, but these were all after PSA pre-selection. Is it possible to use a protocol without contrast medium? A single plane, fast protocol, T2 and diffusion imaging alone. Well, if you look at the screening studies that have been done without PSA pre-selection, you can see every single one of these used MRI without contrast, and successfully so. The next thing we need to ask is, what is a positive and what is a negative MRI? Now, PIRATES 3, 4, and 5 is used for early detection settings. PIRATES 4 and 5 is probably more suitable for screening scenarios because the disease prevalence rates are lower. It's worth looking at the MRI studies and specifically at the reimagined study as we think about what might be the cutoff. You'll see MRI without contrast, but the interesting thing is what was the positive and negative criteria? They only looked at focal lesions on a high B value image and on the T2 sequence. That's it. And here is their reading protocol. You'll see their reading protocol just looks for a focal lesion on a T2 and on a high B value image alone, and that is it. Now, how effective is it for us to use this new criteria? Well, it turns out that this approach had the highest positive predictive value. You can see across the board, you can see the positive predictive value vary from 44 to 20% here, but this, the reimagined study, had a positive predictive value of 50%. 
52%, the highest one. But look at the rate of insignificant cancers. Only 1% insignificant cancers were overdiagnosed. So only 1% of scan men, uh, screen men, had insignificant cancers. So in fact, we were able to drive down the number of insignificant cancers. The other thing we need to think about is the need to have specialist radiologists reading these scans. And this assertion comes from the data that we've seen from the probase and the OPT studies where they started screening at, at 50. And the data so shows us that one, the biparametric MRI is more challenging to read. We know that requires high expertise anyway. But when you start looking at younger men, with biparametric MRI, it gets even tougher. And in fact, we know that the youngest men have the lowest prevalence. But what we found was that there were too many biopsies that were done in younger men. And it is necessary to certify MRI readers so that we can minimize the subsequent follow up and workup, which you know will consist of a multiparametric MRI, an MDT review, and a biopsy. So we do need to think about certification. And I just wanted to show you an example of a very young man who has a very strong family history. Now, clearly the use of AI is inappropriate because the AI algorithms have not been trained in younger men. If you look at the reimagined study, they say, don't look at the ADC at all. Just look at focal high signal abnormalities in the in the on the T2 or on the high B value images. And do you see a focal lesion here? Well if you were to use the reimagined study this would be called negative. What do you think? The other thing we need to decide is who are the best men for MRI? Is it everybody in an age range? Is it risk stratified and PSA levels or some other biomarker, or is it just higher risk men? What is a higher risk man anyway? Well, uh, we can all agree that men with genetic predispositions need to be screened. Bracket carriers, Lynch syndrome, Lee Fraumeni syndromes, etc. West African men need to be screened because they are at a much higher prevalence than, um, than um, Caucasian men, and of course men with a strong family history. So here is a man with a strong family history turned out to be a BRCA1 carrier and that lesion that you see is in fact a 3 plus 4 cancer. We are going to use MRI pre-selection. Then the question is, what's the level of the MRI of the PSA? There's a range. If you look at the studies, they suggest different ranges. What is it? Uh, Radiologists need to be involved in these conversations also because it's going to affect our working. The second thing is, can we reduce the number of MRIs that we're doing? We're already doing too many MRIs in secondary care. And then to pile in a whole bunch of new men from the screening study would be problematic for radiologists. Now, in fact, it is possible by using a multi-layered approach to reduce the total number of MR men coming for a uh, MRI scan. So if you look at the top panel, you'll see in the early detection settings, so that they've already been clinically assessed with PSA, etc. You can see if you were to use the Stockholm test, you can reduce the demand of MRI by almost 40%. You can then subsequently reduce the need for a biopsy by about 10 percent. If you look at the bottom panel, and this will use a calicrine test, here you can see that there's a 30 percent reduction in the demand for MRI and then a subsequent 50 percent reduction in prostate biopsies. While we're talking about biopsies, what is the best combination of MRI findings and PSA when deciding who needs a biopsy? This was looked at in a simulation study recently. You'll see that if you use a traditional approach of a PSA greater than 3 and a systematic biopsy, 
you would biopsy about 10% of men and you would diagnose 1% of cancers. And you can see that here. Any MRI approach improves detection rates. So these are detection rates. Any MRI approach is better. Some MRI approaches are better than others. So if you took a low PSA of say one and an MRI of three, four and five, you would end up detecting more cancers, but the biopsy rates would become unacceptable, almost double. Some approaches, such as the EAU screening recommendation, would only elevate the detection rate by a half a percent, but it would be very effective at reducing the total number of biopsies undertaken. In fact, that might be the best strategy, a PSA of one, and a Pirates 4 and 5. That might be the golden ticket. We still need to explore in further detail what is the best combination of PSA and MRI. While we're talking about biopsies, which is the best method for doing a biopsy? Is it a targeted biopsy alone? Is it a regional targeted biopsies, which is what now being recommended by the EAU in 2024? Or is it a targeted plus systematic biopsy? Do we know? I don't think we know yet. Well, this is interesting data that looked at that question. And if you look on the right-hand panel, you'll see that MRI reduces the total number of men needing a biopsy. No surprise, we've already said that. Okay. Now, interestingly, using the MRI approach, you will get less unproductive cancers and less clinically insignificant cancers. Not a surprise, that's exactly what we're expecting. But look on the right hand side. You'll see that there are a few cancers that will be missed. In this study, you'll see it's 10 men. And out of those 10 men, most were GG2s and therefore would have been suitable for active surveillance. And remember, this is just the first screening run. There is an inbuilt safety net in the whole of this. So these men that got missed would be picked up on subsequent rounds. So if we think about the key insights from these screening studies, there are a number of points we can raise, we can say. One, this is single time point evidence. We don't know how well MRI will behave in subsequent rounds. I think we can be confident that it'll do quite well, but we need to find out. We know that the benefits that we see in early detection settings now translates into screening settings. Good. We know that we can successfully employ MRI whether we pre-risk stratify or don't risk stratify uh, patients before they come to MRI, which is great. However, we have seen some limitations. Too many MRI scans, too many biopsies still, too many unproductive biopsies and a high reader variability, particularly in younger men, who of course have the lowest rates of cancer. So here are my final thoughts. I think it's premature to conclude that MRI in the screening pathway will impact on the long-term mortality because we haven't really shown improved detection of clinically significant cancers. Harm reduction, certainly. Mortality, I don't know. Clearly, we need to adjust the MRI for the screening scenario. In other words, we need to refine protocols, interpretation criteria, and make sure that readings are done effectively by certified radiologists with AI deployment, we need to integrate MRI into this multi-layered approach. So in other words, the pathway has to be quality assured and cost effective. And we need to be able to assure that MRI is in, it can get to as many people as possible. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found some of these comments useful as you think about what your own role might be in prostate cancer screening.